Hey everyone, so on today's video, what I want to show you is what is a Dialogflow CX uh, webhook, which is one of the most important things on Dialogflow CX development. So basically, uh, um, our webhook is a, a call uh, that we are going to add on our flows, on our pages. Uh, on the on the Allowflow CX, and we are, what we are gonna call is basically our backend. Okay, so for instance, imagine that we design uh, one assistant that requests or the, or the end users can request information about the current weather on I don't know, for instance, in Madrid or wherever you are. And as you as you know, uh, the agent itself it is kind of a static, you know, so. On, on, on your webhooks, uh, you can uh, get and, and develop uh, to fetch that dynamic information, you know, like when, when a user requests the, the weather of uh, the Madrid's weather or, or whatever weather, uh, you can call this webhook and this uh, webhook, this backend is the one that is gonna um, fetch that dynamic information and will show that dynamic information to the user which is really important because uh, adding dynamically um, information and adding dynamics dynamism inf uh, to your agent it is better just to not to have uh, like you know like a poor interaction with your assistants or with your data flow cx agents so how can i create um, a webhook um, the recommended way uh, on the Alloflow CX basically is to create a Google Cloud function. Um, this is the serverless uh, paradigm and the serverless service uh, under the Google Cloud. Uh, so um, it's kind of it's similar to the AWS Lambda in AWS, in AWS services. So it's, it's basically the same. Um, how can I create it? So First, what you will need to create is under is the webhook itself. Okay, so under the build, uh, sorry, under your engine in the manage tab, you will see the webhook information, the web the webhook section. So here you will create the webhook. Okay, so let's click here because I have one already created. But basically, what you have to add is the um, the cloud the display name, the webhook timeout. That means that if my webhook uh, does not give me a response in five seconds, uh, I'm gonna throw an event, which is, I think is, uh, is a timeout event, a system event, and the type. It could be a generic web service or a service directory. In this case, and the most common use cases, you are gonna interact with the generic web service. And then you are gonna specify the webhook URL, okay? So here is, it's, it has to have a, an, a publicly available HTTPS URL, okay? And in this case, this is like the global webhook URL, okay? Why I'm telling you this? Because if you create different environments, you can specify those different uh, webhook URLs or you can add different webhooks URLs to uh, different environments. Why? Because for instance, let's say that you have your staging environment or your development environment. So you can push, a, you know, your code to a Google Cloud function uh, in a development stage or in a staging stage or in a pre-production stage. So you can push there, having a different URL and specify it here. Okay, this is a uh, best practice and I highly recommend. In case that you don't specify the URL per environment, uh, you can, uh, it will use the, the global one, okay? The webhook URL, which is the mandatory one here. You can see the star here. Um, for the authentication, you can use uh, like basic uh, authentication using login, username, and password. You can set up a custom a custom headers as well and you can upload a custom uh, certificate just in case you need it uh, to interact with your https okay so as i said the recommendation are uh, 
Well, the recommendation in this case is to use Google Cloud Function because first is uh, super easy to set up uh, a serverless function. Um, in this case, it is like, I don't know, like kind of important and, and as well, like the, the serverless framework itself or the serverless architecture makes a lot of sense because you don't need a server, a basic server, HTTPS server that is running always, you know, that is just, this is just um, a, a scenario when you will need to spin up a, a function, you know, a serverless function, um, fulfill or fetch the information that you want, and then, you know, turn off or turn down that, that function. So this is a good scenario of using the, um, the, the serverless architecture. So that is why I recommend to use serverless architecture for, for your webhooks. So um, if we go here under my, under my uh, blog site, you will see uh, a guide about Dialogflow 6 webhook development, and you can see like all the steps that you need uh, to create um, a webhook, okay? And deploy it to Google Cloud. So, here is the, the explanation. In this example, what I'm gonna show you is the basically the um, uh, webhook built using Golang. Um, the, you can build your webhooks in a bunch of uh, programming languages. There are like a lot of SDKs available, like Java, uh, Python, Golang, JavaScript. There are a lot of uh, languages available. So you can pick uh, your preferred language. In my case, I use Golang. But yeah, basically what you are gonna have is like an entry point, like a function uh, that is gonna be called because we are using the, the serverless architecture, you know, and we're gonna deploy this to a Google Cloud function. So whenever you uh, create your, your function, that depends on your um, on your preferred language, but you will have like a main function, and that main function is the one that is gonna get the request because that is a, the entry point, a process the information that you want, and then return the the response. Okay, so this is the the example in Golang. So what I'm doing, uh, like basically, is uh, getting the response. Uh, mapping everything into a Golan extract to have like the proper typings. You know, here I have everything imported under uh, using the CX package, the Golang SDK uh, for the Dialogflow CX. So I have the, my webhook request, my webhook response, and I'm just reading this. Um, once I have my extract uh, already like uh, and Marshall and Vin and, and, and having that ready to be used. Um, I just, in this like a uh, simple example, I just log the request. Uh, I prepare my response and then I marshal the response uh, in a, um, into, into bytes basically and I send the bytes back, okay? So this is my simple example. So when you have your uh, function ready, your Google Cloud function, what you can do is first you have to enable the API. As you know, on your Google Cloud projects, you have to enable APIs in order to use new services. So here you will need the uh, G Cloud. Uh, using the G Cloud CLI, you will need to enable it. Just running G Cloud service, enable cloud function .google -apis com, And then it's as easy as a... Um, uh, for deploying your your uh, Google uh, function is as easy as running this command. So you can just execute a gcloud functions, deploy my agent function, does that runtime. In my case, I want to use golang uh, 1.19. The trigger is uh, HTTP because as you know, the all like same is in, in AWS Lambda, the triggers can be came uh, or, or the, our functions can be triggered uh, using different triggers, basically like HTTP um, as an Google Cloud Storage event. So same same concept at AWS Lambda. So in this case, what we want is to be triggered uh, by calling the function using uh, the HTTP trigger because we are gonna call in kind of using RESTful 
eh, de, de RESTful um, API. And then the entry point, okay? So the entry point, as you as you saw, is the handle web uh, webhook request function that we have here, the handle webhook request, and that's it. The my my dash agent function is basically the the name of my Google Cloud function. So when once this when, once this finishes, it it usually takes around two minutes to be deployed. It's quite fast. What we are gonna have is a public endpoint. That public endpoint is gonna uh, be like this, like HTTPS uh, region, that's the project ID, and then the function name. So in this case, imagine that I deploy this in US Central one, and my project is this one, the URL is gonna be like this, okay? So once I have done this, uh, I just go to the webhook uh, page here, go to the webhook URL and then just paste the URL there. And, and that's it. Uh, we have deployed our webhook uh, and it is connected to our Dialogflow 6. Then uh, we can go to our uh, agent, for example, here. We can go to the start page or whatever and just click on any route, for example, like when we say hi, we can go to the <clears throat> to the enable webhook and choose our webhook whenever we want. In this case, is this one the cloud function, and we can just uh, select it. And what the what we are gonna use is uh, or when we type here the high intent or when we trigger the high intent in this route, we are gonna execute our webhook. You have to specify specify the tag. Uh, so with the tag, you can um, use the same webhook but depending on the tag you know like the id or from where i calling the the webhook you can have like like an if else or a switch uh, just to determine uh, the specific point in the conversation that the webhook is being called and and yeah that's that's it for for this video i hope this is uh, useful for you and remember that you can find all this information in on my on my blog site and shavidop.me and also my github okay that is available there as well perfect see you bye bye see you in the next video